today's session. Okay. So for every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. So for everything that you achieve in life, you have to start at some point or other. Okay. And today is the day that you decide that you want to put your leg forward and move forward for the preparation of your MDS exams or may, may it be any other exams that you're preparing, but everything requires knowledge. And I feel I am a person who strongly believes in grasping knowledge from wherever possible. Okay. So let's keep this in our mind and move to our topic. That is pattern of bone destruction in periodontal lesions. Okay. So what we'll do today is my basic aim is to give you a overview of how we will be doing this in detail when you come for live contact classes with us. So when you come with me for Perio, you will get an idea of how we will be taking classes and how we will go about teaching you each topic, giving you the concept behind it, making sure that you understand everything. Okay, so we will discuss just five questions today and some important concepts are, uh, regard, uh, related to that. Okay, so the first question is concept of radius of action was put forward by the radius of action was put forward by if any of you know the answer you can just uh, uh, give it in the message or i'll wait for a minute and see if anybody of you have an answer to this <coughs> concept of radius of action was put forward by okay i've just got one message uh, okay and that is right okay so yes the answer is Answer is C, Page and Schroeder. Answer is C, Page and Schroeder. Okay, Page and Schroeder. Yes, very good. Few of you have come out with the correct answer. Okay, so now as we go on, we will now study a little bit about the topic that is the bone loss. How is bone loss occurring and what is happening in this, this thing? Okay, so... Uh, right now, we studied the topic concept of radius of action. So radius of action, normally the question that used to come always was, what is the radius of action? That was a very common question which used to come before. But now the pattern, trend, everything is changing. Okay. So the, if you get a question, the answer is 1.5 mm to 2.5 mm. Okay. Now, we are talking about bone loss. So how does bone loss occur in? periodontal conditions. Okay, so there are three ways in which the bone loss can occur. Three ways. Okay, one is by inflammation. One is by inflammation. Okay, inflammation. The second is trauma. We all keep hearing trauma from occlusion and all those things. So second is from trauma. And the third is from systemic causes. Third is systemic causes. Okay, so these are the three main causes. Okay, of uh, bone destruction. Now we today, we will see just inflammation because we can't go into depth of each one, but you, today we'll just see about inflammation. So for any inflammation to start within the uh, periodontal tissues, what do you need? What is the thing that you need for the inflammation to start there? Yes, it is the presence of, what is this that I'm drawing here? It is a presence of bacterial plaque. It is the presence of bacterial plaque. This bacterial plaque will initially cause what? It initially caught what? It will cause inflammation of your gingiva. And that is known as gingivitis. And that is known as gingivitis. It causes inflammation of gingiva, which is known as gingivitis. Okay, here, remember, it is purely confined within the gingiva. It is purely confined within the gingiva. Now, in some individuals, due to certain factors, from this gingiva, the inflammation then proceeds on to the periodontal, it goes on to the periodontal supporting tissues, periodontal supporting tissues, other supporting tissues of the periodontal. What is that? That is cap, that is cap, that is your cementum, alveolar bone, and your periodontal ligament. <clears throat> so you have your cementum, alveolar bone, and your periodontal ligament. Okay, so when the inflammation from the gingiva goes on to these supporting structures, goes on to these supporting structures, then you call the lesion as, then you call the lesion as 
periodontitis. Then you call the lesion as periodontitis. When the bone starts resolving, when there is loss of the periodontal ligament structures and loss of cementum, that is when you call as periodontitis. For periodontitis to occur, remember, for periodontitis to occur, gingivitis is a prerequisite. That means gingivitis has to be present. We are talking about inflammatory. Okay. So gingivitis has to be present for periodontitis to occur. Okay. But, but does all periodon all gingivitis progress to periodontitis? Can I have an answer to that? Does all gingivitis progress to periodontitis? No. Yes. Very good. It does not. Okay. It varies from individual to individual. <coughs> It varies from individual to individual. Okay. So now we understood that what has happened? That gingivitis progresses to periodontitis, and that is how inflammation from the gingiva, inflammation from the gingiva moves on to the supporting periodontal tissues, moves on to the supporting periodontal tissues. Okay. So now we will see. How does it move into the supporting periodontal tissues? So we understood there is inflammation here. Go back to the right. Okay, so we have inflammation here. Okay, and then this inflammation spreads to the su supporting tissues. How does it spread? It spreads by our blood vessels which is there in the connective tissue of the gingiva, which is there in the connective tissue of the gingiva. This connective tissue contains what? Lot of fibers, lot of collagen fibers. And along these collagen fibers and along the connective tissue, blood vessels run to your alveolar bone, to your PDL. Okay, so from through this pathway, that is from gingiva to the blood vessels, from the blood vessels, it goes into the alveolar bone. Now, there are different pathways they explain, okay, for the interdental area and for the facial and lingual area. Interdental area, this is the interdental area. In interdental area, gingiva inflammation can directly spread to the alveolar bone. From the alveolar bone, it can go into the PDL and cementum. Or in certain cases, from here, it can go directly into the periodontal ligament. That is one. The other pathway is again for the facial and lingual surfaces of the tooth. Facial and lingual surfaces. What happens? Inflammation spreads via the blood vessels into the outer cortex. Outer cortex. That is the, from the uh, gingival uh, blood vessels. It will go to the periosteum. From the periosteum to the outer cortex and then into the bone. And in some cases here also, it goes directly into the PDA. Okay. <coughs> so that is what is happening. How the inflammation from gingiva reaches your bone and starts resolving the bone and starts resolving the bone. Now, what did what was our question? Con, uh, this thing, radius of action. So this radius of action, how do we correlate to this condition here? How do we correlate to this condition here? Now, if this bacterial plaque is present here, this bacterial plaque has a radius of action. That is how much? 2.5 mm. Up to 2.5 mm, this bacterial plaque or the plaque can release local factors and it can resolve bone. Okay, so the reach of this plaque is only up to 2.5 mm. If it is more than 2.5 mm, you will not have any bone loss in that region. Okay, if the bone loss occurs, it is due to some other factors. And if it is bacterial, it is due to the presence of certain bacteria which has the ability to enter into your periodontal tissues and those are the ones which can cause destruction. Okay, so up to, for us, what we should know, radius of action is 1.5 to 2.5 mm and it is in this zone that the bacteria or the local factors can cause inflammation or local factors can cause bone resorption. Okay, I hope uh, this concept of radius of action is clear and how inflammation spreads from your gingiva into the periodontal tissues is also clear. Okay. Somebody has said, please repeat. Okay. So it's very simple. There is inflammation within the gingiva. There is inflammation within the gingiva. Just a minute. Okay. Red 
color. Okay, there is inflammation within your gingiva. This inflammation spreads down. How does it spread? It spreads through your blood vessels into your alveolar bone. Okay, now this spread can may vary from uh, in different ways. What are all the ways? In interdental area, this is the interdental area that we are talking about, interdental region that we are talking about. This is a cross-sectional view that they have given. Okay, so from the gingiva, it can spread directly into the bone. That is one. From the gingiva, it can spread directly into the periodontal ligament. Or from here, from the bone, it can go into the periodontal ligament. Simple. For the facial and lingual region, again, inflammation from gingiva first goes into the periosteum from the periosteum into the outer cortex and into the bone. And sometimes it can go into the PDL directly. Okay, and from the PDL into bone. That we'll study in detail what happens if the pathway changes, what kind, what pattern of bone loss comes, that's all different. For time being, your basic aim is to understand how it comes or how it travels from your gingiva into your alveolar bone. Okay, I hope that is clear. Okay. Now, moving on to the next slide. Okay, very good. Moving on to the next slide. Question number two. Crater is a type of what defect? Crater is a type of what defect? Okay, so to know this, first you should know all the types or the classification of bony defects that you see in periodontal lesions. Okay, so anybody knows the answer to this? Anybody? knows the answer to this. The options are suprabony defect, infrabony defect, interradicular defect, and none of the above. <clears throat> okay, so see, uh, some of you are giving correct answers, some of you are giving wrong answers. So this now will, so this should help you to solidify your concept of what we are gonna study now. Okay, so the answer here is, crater is a type of infrabony defect. Crater is a type of infra bony defect. Now we will see why we are saying that and what is the classification. Okay. So this is the classification of, this is the classification of in, uh, different types of bone defects that you see in periodontal lesions. Okay. This classification was given by Goldman and Cohen. The classification is given by Goldman and Cohen. Every, very important in every lecture, all classification, all important authors, I will put forward like this as one point because many of times you get a question on them. Who gave this classification? Okay, so please make a note of this. When we go into your live classes, make sure you by heart all these authors. The important ones we will always put forward. <coughs> okay, now coming to the defects. <clears throat> the first one we have is a supra bony defect. Supra bony defect. So what do you mean by this? Let me draw and show you. What do you mean by supra bony defect? This is the bone. And let me draw the periodontal tissue. This is your pocket that has formed here. Okay, this is known as supra bony defect. What is the other name for supra bony defect? It is also known as horizontal bone defect. It is also known as horizontal defects. Now, how do you define this? You can define it two ways. In relationship to the bone, you can see that the bone will be perpendicular to the root surface. The crest of the alveolar bone will be perpendicular to the root surface. Or you can say that the base of the pocket will be always coronal to the crest of the alveolar bone. The base of the pocket, the base of this periodontal pocket is coronal. It is situated at a coronal level as compared to the crest of the alveolar bone. As compared to the crest of the alveolar bone. Very simple. That is your supra bony defect or your horizontal defects. Okay, I hope that is clear. Now we will move on to infra bony defect. So what is the other name for infra bony defect? They are also known as vertical defect or they are also known as angular defect. Okay. This classification you will not find in Karanza. This is taken from a textbook known as Linde. Okay, it's a one step higher, but this is the correct classification, which is for the uh, bony defects. Okay, so 
infra bony defects or vertical defect or angular defects what are this these infra bony defects are further subdivided into two categories what are those they are subdivided into intra bony remember this is f this is t infra bony intra bony so you have an intra bony defect and you have a crater you have an intra bony defect and you have a crater this intra bony defect is further subdivided into one wall defect two wall defect three wall defect and sometimes you can see something known as combined defect okay so you have supra bony defect and infra bony defects infra bony defects is further subdivided into intra bony defects and crater okay and the last classification is interradicular defect can you tell me what is interradicular defects what defects are we talking about in simple terms when we talk in dentistry what is interradicular defects anybody anybody can tell me what do you mean by interradicular defects what do you mean by interradicular defects yes i got one very good very good now answers are coming in yes it is furcation involvement between roots very good so here what are we talking about we are talking about defects or in the furcation area when you see defects like this okay when you see defects like this when you see that the probe can pass through and through then you say that it is an interradicular defects and that is again subdivided or classified more we will come to that but this is the three major classification <coughs> okay this is a three major class is this clear supra bony defects infra bony defects and interradicular defects okay this is first what you should get into your head now we will go into detail one by one how do you differentiate among all this okay so i hope the first major classification is clear so so what you need to know is supra bony defect infra bony defect and interradicular defect and interradicular defect okay now we will see a clinical picture of all this okay so this is a clinical picture from your textbook can you see the defect here let me just take the pen okay can you see the defect here it's mostly horizontal in pattern mostly this is your cemento enamel junction and the bone is flat like this okay bone is flat to the tooth surface or forming you can say it is forming 90 degree to the tooth surface you can say flat architecture okay flat that is your supra bony defect then you see a defect here you can see one okay let me change the color again you can see one wall here and then a defect going inside which is surrounded by wall at every angle okay so now here what is the thing see the base of the pocket infra bony defect let me draw it here infra bony defect let me draw it here this is the defect this is the bone defect and this is where the pocket will be this is where the pocket will be so what is here the base of the pocket is apical to the crest of the alveolar bone the base of the pocket base of the pocket is apical to the crest of the alveolar bone when we studied horizontal what did we study if i draw horizontal here on this side and the pocket here what did we study horizontal here the base of the pocket is coronal to the crest of the alveolar bone okay that is a basic difference or if you talk in relationship to the bone the crest of the or the defect is at at the same level as the crest of the alveolar bone same level as the crest of the alveolar but in this case look at the bony defect the bony defect is again at a much lower level than the crest of the alveolar bone so that is the basic difference between a horizontal defect and an angular defect a horizontal defect and an angular defect or supra bony defect and infra bony defect supra bony defect and infra bony defect <clears throat> okay and then you have the what is the last one interradicular defect you have interradicular defect you have inter defect here see you can see the furcation there so that is the interradicular defect is this clear supra bony infra bony and interradicular we will now go into the details but i just want to know that at least till this point you know the difference between three types of bone defects supra bony infra bony and interradicular defects can i get a yes if it is clear so that we can move on 
ओके वेरी गुड वेरी गुड ओके नाइस ओके सो द बेसिक स्टफ इज ओवर ओके नाउ वी आर गोइंग इन टू द डिस्कशन ऑफ ईच ऑफ दिस ओके move this a bit so that i can yeah okay so we already studied what supra boni defect defects where the base of the pocket is located coronal to the alveolar bone coronal to the alveolar bone infra boni defect defect where the base of the pocket is located apical to the alveolar crest apical to the alveolar crest now we come to the two different types of infra boni defect which is the first one first one is your in sorry first one is your intra bony defect first one is your intra bony defect what is intra bony defect bony defect whose infra bony component primary affects only one tooth so it is a type of infra bony defect but it affects only one tooth it affects only one tooth i'll explain why we are saying like that okay so we studied the uh, subdivision of this what did we studied three wall defect two wall defect and one wall defect okay now what do you mean by three wall defect okay so remember in perio we talk about preservation try to preserve everything so we are talking about what is re remaining or what has been preserved after the bone has resolved okay so three wall defects means it is a number of walls that is remaining after the defect has occurred or after the lesion has occurred okay so three wall defect is the number of walls that are remaining number of walls that are remaining okay so there was a problem okay so three wall defect meaning it is a number of walls that are remaining in the defect okay now i'll show you what i am telling you okay so first one is the three wall defect so first according to our definition what does an intra bony defect says it affects only one tooth so this is the tooth that is affected okay this is the tooth that is affected now we are going to study about three wall defect so three wall defect meaning three walls are remaining that means three walls are preserved remember perio preservation so we are talking only about what is preserved many students towards the end of the exam they tell me so we get confused whether it is remaining or what is gone we get confused remember perio p p for preservation number of walls preserved okay so in three wall defect you have what is this the facial wall it is intact right this facial wall is intact so one wall is present good that is a first wall good then you have this wall that is present what is that wall can anybody tell me the wall that i just colored <coughs> the wall that i just colored can you tell me which is this wall that i am talking about the wall that i just colored what is that wall anybody no that is where okay that is where it is now the con see the mesial very good dr saras devi very good yes now what we are talking about is the wall which is remaining what is remaining see that there is a gap next to this tooth here that means the wall mesial or the bone mesial to that tooth is already eaten up the what is present is something which is far away from that so it is distal so you have the distal wall which is present and then finally you have this wall can you see this wall this wall that is present so one wall here two wall here and three wall so you have the facial wall you have the distal wall and you have the lingual wall three walls are preserved so what defect is it when three walls are present what defect is it we call it as a three wall defect because three walls are remaining okay very good now let's move on to the next classification that is the two wall defect so now it becomes easier that means there are only two walls remaining can anybody tell me what are the two walls that are remaining here this wall here and this wall here which are the two walls which are remaining here which are the two walls that are remaining here very uh, uh, it's not the facial wall facial is what facing towards us 
Yes, it is the distal and lingual wall. It is the distal and lingual wall. So only two walls are preserved. So you call it a two wall defect. Which all walls did we lose? We lost this one, the facial wall, and we lost the mesial wall. Okay. And then coming to the final one, that is the one wall defect. What is very simple. There is only one wall remaining. Which wall is remaining? Which wall is remaining? Very good. Uh -uh, somebody has put lingual. Can you see a gap there? Lingual is gone. The lingual is gone. Only one wall is remaining. That is the distal wall. Now, why I'm stressing important sense? Imagine if the distal wall was also gone. If the distal wall, this was also gone. Is it? Is the bone defect affecting only one tooth or does it start affecting the other tooth also? It will start affecting the other tooth also. Then it becomes two teeth. Then it becomes two teeth. Then can we say it is intrabony? We intrabony? No, we cannot say. So always the distal wall next to the tooth should be preserved. Then only we can say that it is an intrabony defect. Then only we can say it is an intra. So here only this tooth is affected. See, this tooth's lingual wall is gone. This tooth's facial wall is gone, and this tooth's mesial wall is gone. <coughs> is that clear? So that is the that is the three types of defects. That is the three types of defects. Okay. Now, sometimes in some situations, in some situations, what happens is that one of the walls will be at a much lower level than the other bone level. See, the distal wall is here, the lingual wall is here, but the facial wall is resolved, but it is not resolved completely. That means in the coronal end, there is wall defect. The bone is eaten up. But as you come epically, but as you come epically, suddenly you will find the wall here. Side, suddenly you will find a wall here. So in the coronal end of that tooth, you will have a two wall defect. Here it is a two wall defect. But when you come towards the epical end, it becomes a three wall effect. It becomes a three, because now three walls are uh, up there. Three walls are preserved. Little bit of the facial wall towards the epical end, the distal wall and the lingual wall. The distal wall and the lingual wall. Yes, I will repeat it again. I will repeat it again. Okay. So in, let me just clear this so that I can just go through it again. Okay. Okay. So what is a, com a combined defect? So we are talking about combined defect here. We are talking about combined defect. Here. So what is it? Nothing but it is a kind of defect where in the coronal portion of the defect, if we are talking about this defect as a whole, in the coronal portion of the defect, it's a two wall defect. Because which all are the walls that are present? Distal wall and lingual wall. Facial wall is it present at the coronal most end? No, it's eaten up or it has been resolved. But as you come apically, as you come apically of that defect, what happens? The facial wall is preserved. A little bit of the facial wall is preserved. So at the apical end of that defect, it becomes a three wall defect. So it's a combination. At the top, it is a two wall and at the bottom, it is a three wall. Okay, so that is why it is called as a combined defect. I hope it is clear now. It is called a combined defect. Okay, so now we studied three wall defect. This one where three walls are remaining. Two wall defect where two walls are remaining and one wall defect where one wall is remaining. Is this clear? And then you have the combined defect. Two walls in the top at the coronal end and three walls towards the apical end. So there's a combination of two defects. So it is called a combined defect. Is this much clear? Different types of... <coughs> you don't get the walls. Walls are... See, the, imagine this is a three dimension. So this is just a pictorial ex explanation. This is a pictorial explanation. When I come to the clinical picture, I will explain it to you how to identify it. How to, you have to clinically see it two, three times to understand it. Okay. You have to clinically see two, three times to understand it. But it's a very simple concept. If, if you just look at this first one, if you just look at this first one, you will be able to understand all the walls. You will be able to understand all the walls. See, the facial wall is intact here. Okay. This is the facial wall. This is the facial wall. The one facing towards us, facial wall. This is the facial end of the tooth. Other opposite is the lingual. So the wall that is on the facial end, it is called the facial wall. 
Now this wall, which is present, that is away from the root. This is the root end. It is away from the root, so it is called the distal wall. Away. If the bone was filled here, if the bone was filled here, then this will be the mesial part of that bone. Mesial part of that. But that is not there now. That is being eaten up. That is eaten up. That is eaten up. Okay. So you only have the you only have the distal and the wall that is towards the lingual side. That is known as the lingual wall. So you have the facial wall. you have the distal wall and you have the lingual wall i hope this is clear so when you come here look at this they have now what they have done they have taken out the facial wall they have taken out the facial wall here the facial wall is not present the facial wall is not present here only which all walls are present here you only have the distal wall and the lingual wall just look at this picture and try to correlate and then finally in this one okay, you can see a gap let me raise this one you can see a gap on the back side of the tooth see there is a hole in this back side of the tooth so means the wall from there is also gone which is that wall on the back side that is a lingual wall the buccal wall here is also gone only wall that is remaining is this distal wall only wall that is remaining is the distal wall so that is how you get three wall defect two wall defect and one wall defect okay i will show you the clinical pictures also so you will get a better idea Okay, so I'm erasing this now. So we are now done with the we are now done with the intra bony defects. We are done with the intra bony defects. Now moving on to next one. That is your crater. That is your crater. What is crater? Crater. It is a cup shaped or a bowl shaped deformity. Crater is a cup shaped or a bowl shaped deformity okay somebody has asked me combined uh, combined defect is what we discussed here see that means in the, this is the whole defect as such okay let me go back somebody still has a doubt this is the whole defect as such now just concentrate on this defect just concentrate on this defect can you see how many walls are there this this is the coronal end of the defect the coronal end of the defect now here there is one wall here in the coronal end and one wall here which is this wall who is the one who asked me shubham okay shubham tell me which is this wall which is this wall that i am drawing first we just discussed which is this wall yes very good which is this one just put the first letters so distal you can put d and for lingual yes you can so you have distal and lingual walls that are present in the coronal end of this whole defect at the topmost when we open the flap the first thing that we see is that okay there is a bone here there is a wall here there is a wall here so it is a two wall defect at the coronal end now as i open the defect more down then i see that at this end there is a small wall here there is a small wall here okay just like this see they have put two wall one wall two wall and then a half of a wall here so at the apical end at the coronal end it had two walls at the apical end it has three walls now which all are those three walls same thing the distal wall extending down the lingual wall extending down and suddenly you have a buccal wall also okay so now you have three walls there so it becomes a three wall defect yes the facial wall you have three walls there so now it becomes a three wall defect so in one defect itself at the coronal end you have two walls and at the apical end you have three walls so that is called a combined defect where it's a combination of two defects i hope it is clear now okay okay <coughs> now moving on to the now moving on to the next one okay so in the next in your definition is the crater crater is nothing but a cup or a bowl shaped deformity okay bowl shaped deformity but what is it different from the intra bony defects it involves two adjacent teeth it involves two adjacent teeth that is why it is called as a that is why it is called as a crater but not classified under intra bony so if i draw a picture here to make you understand it this is one tooth here this is one tooth here 
this drawing is not that good, but this is the crater that I'm drawing. Okay, so now what are we talking about? This defect or this bony defect is communicating with this tooth and it is communicating with this tooth. So here there are two teeth involved. Here are two adjacent teeth involved. Two adjacent teeth involved. That is why it is called as a crater. And it is cup or bowel shape. Mostly seen in the interdental regions in the posterior teeth. Mostly seen in the interdental regions in the posterior teeth. Whereas see our intra bony defects, it is affecting this tooth here, this tooth here, this tooth here. This one is protected. This one is protected. This one is protected. Adjacent tooth is protected. Whereas in crater, both the tooth surfaces are involved. That is why it is separate from an intra bony defect. Where, why? Because it involves two adjacent tooth surfaces. It involves this tooth surface and this tooth surface. Okay. I hope that is clear. Okay. Very good. So that is the different types of bony defects that you see. Different types of bony defects that you see and how to identify them and how to identify them. Okay. Very good. I've got a yes. Okay, so next is moving on to the next one. Sir, Supra. Okay, I'll come to that. I'll come back to Supra. Okay, so <clears throat> with this, I'll explain it to you. Okay, so question number three. Osseous form where the interdental bone is apical to the radicular bone is known as osseous form where the interdental bone is apical to the radicular bone is known as. Okay, so there are, before we go into the answer, okay, there are people who are already answering. Okay, very good. Very good, very good. Okay, most of you have given the answer, correct. It is a negative architecture. It is negative architecture. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll I'll show you, I'll draw and show you what do you mean by that. Okay, so this is the, this is one tooth here. We can draw one molar here. And this is the adjacent molar here. Okay. Now, ideally, how should the bone be? Ideally, the bone should be like this. The bone should be like this. Now, what do you mean by that? Look at this. In the interdental area, when you see, the bone is at a much higher level as compared to the facial or lingual bone. We are seeing from the front. Just imagine you are just opening your lips and seeing the tooth from the front. Okay. Or just think you're seeing your gingiva. Always remember the gingiva will follow the same pattern as your alveolar bone. That is the tendency of gingiva. If the bone is dipping, the gingiva will also dip there. Okay. Or it will end up in forming a big pocket. Okay. So, the interdental bone is at a much higher level as compared to the facial or lingual bone. So this is the proper architecture. In a good, in ideal cases, in cases where there is no bone loss, this is how the bone architecture should be. This is called as a, what do you call it? A positive architecture, this one. Or you call it as a scalloped architecture. There are two names to it. It is either called a positive architecture or a scalloped architecture. Okay, now in some cases, due to bone resorption, occurring in this interdental area. Okay, let me take off the positive architecture now. Okay, okay. And let's bring back a flat architecture. So flat architecture will be somewhat like this. Flat architecture will be somewhat like this. That means the interdental bone and the facial bone will be at the same level. The interdental bone and the facial bone will be at the same level. So that is known as a flat architecture. Okay. But in some cases, now what happens is that I will add to it so that you will understand it properly. Let me take another color. Let's take bright red. Okay. No, red. Uh, so in negative architecture, what happens? The interdental bone is at a much lower level than the facial bone. This is what is a negative architecture. The interdental bone here is at a much lower level as compared to your facial or lingual bone. That is known as a negative architecture. That is known as negative architecture. So you will have three types of architectures. 
the correct one or the normal one is the scalloped which is we call it as positive architecture then you can have something like this which is called as the flat architecture and then sometimes you will have an architecture like this where in the interdental areas there will be bone loss interdental areas there will be bone loss or reversal of this and that is known as your negative architecture okay is this clear positive architecture sca uh, or scalloped negative architecture negative architecture is also called something else can anybody tell me what is the other name of negative architecture <coughs> another name for negative architecture what has happened now the normal one has been reversed very good so it is known as reversed architecture it is known as reversed architecture the normal positive architecture has been reversed normal architecture has been reversed so it is called as a reversed architecture it is called as a reversed architecture okay <clears throat> uh, i hope this is clear okay so i'm just erasing all this now and i'll just clear out the doubt on supra bony defect just draw and show you one so that you will understand somebody had a doubt supra bony defect okay we'll just finish it here itself okay okay i'll draw and show you so that you understand it okay perio you need to have lot of pictures for you to understand supra bony defect what is the significance what are the things you have to know first the bone the crest of the bone will be perpendicular to the root surface then the base of the pocket will be always coronal to the crest of the this is the crest of the alveolar bone crest of crest of alveolar bone okay so what all you should look the pocket the base of the pocket will be always coronal base of the pocket will be always coronal to the crest of the alveolar bone and the alveolar bone will form a 90 degree angle with the root surface will form a 90 degree angle with the root surface flat horizontal okay i hope that is clear now okay okay so osseous form where the interdental bone is apical to the radicular bone is known as a negative architecture okay moving on to the next question moving on to the next uh, before that just a clinical picture when you open a flap how do you recognize it is a negative architecture or a positive architecture okay so for you to understand let's discuss this this is your facial bone okay the bone that is facing towards us okay is this clear everybody facial bone this whole is the facial bone okay now look at the interdental bone next this is your which molar is this this can be your second molar let's put this as the first molar okay so this is your facial bone now what happens to the interdental bone here what happens to the interdental bone here look at this this is what has happened to look at the interdental bone here this has happened here okay and then this goes like this and towards the premolar it is like this tell me what is the architecture that is here as soon as you open a flap what is this architecture here is it positive negative or flat very good it is negative architecture okay so what is the architecture that is now starting to appear as we moving towards the premolar as we are moving towards the premolar this is the, let's say this is the second premolar as we are moving towards the premolar what is the architecture that has been seen here yes it is moving towards the positive architecture it is moving towards the positive one. so where is the basic defect here where is the basic defect in this the basic defect or the active lesion or the lesion which was active had destroyed the bone is in this region so this is the region that we have to address this is the region that we have to address and as we know that it is going into a positive architecture and if there are no pocket depths better not a open a flap towards that side okay <clears throat> that's based on different criteria okay but just giving you an idea clinically when you look how it will see okay i hope this is clear positive negative and a flat okay so let's rub this off 
And now we will move on to our next question. Okay, very good. All of you are responding. Crest of the defect is same as that of bone in horizontal defect, right? And in vertical, crest of the defect is apical than the alveolar bone, right? Okay, uh, Dr. Jopan, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. Huh? Uh, I'll, I think you're a little bit confused about what is the crest and the, this thing. I'll come to that. Uh, or let me explain it now itself before we leave this. Okay. Your question is, this is the tooth. Okay. We are just talking about an angular diff. I'm just drawing the bone here, uh, not the tissue, just the bone. Okay. This is the crest of the alveolar bone, the crest of the alveolar bone. Okay. And this is the defect that you're seeing. Okay. Now the defect here, this is the base of the bone defect. Okay, the base of the bone defect. So this bone defect, this bony defect is at a very apical end to that of the crest. So this is the crest and this is the base of the defect, base of the, so always in an angular bone loss, the base of the defect will be apical to the crest. Very simple, it has to be like that. If it is horizontal, what will happen? If it is horizontal, let me draw horizontal here the crest and the base of the defect will be at the same level because it is getting resorbed equally. It is getting resorbed equally. Whereas this is getting resorbed unequally, more towards the tooth side, less towards the distal aspect, less towards away from the tooth, less resorption towards the tooth, more resorption. Whereas here, the resorb, if this is the bone here, this is being resorbed equally like this. So the crest and the defect will always remain the same. See, it will reach like this. Whereas in this case, whereas in this case, the resorption is actually starting from here. The resorption is starting like this and it is going at an angle. So the crest is preserved. The crest is preserved, but only the tooth or the bone closer to the tooth is getting eaten away. Closer the tooth is getting eaten away. See, so you will have an angular pattern and this defect will be at a apical end than the crest of the alveolar bone. I hope that is clear. Okay. Okay. So moving on to the next question. Huh? Okay. Now see, now we have come to a clinical question. <coughs> we have come to a clinical question. Yes. Thank you. Okay. You have understood it. Very good. Very good. So I'm happy now. So next question. Identify the defect in this clinical picture. Okay. So first of all, look at the options. You have one wall, two wall, three wall. So all these are what? These are all what? These are all intrabony defects. These are intrabony defects. Okay, which is a type of which is a type of infrabony defect. Both of these are types of infrabony defects. Okay, so that's how you look at it first. Okay, many of you have given already the answer. Okay, very good. So now this one, you have this wall here. See, now just think that this is the clinical situation and this is the wall and you're seeing it from the facial side. So this facial wall is present. So one wall we can pick, one wall is preserved. Then can you see this wall? This wall towards the tooth, the, towards the other tooth. This one is what is affected. This one is not affected, but there is a wall on this tooth. So which is this tooth that I'm drawing now? This is your distal wall. And on the inner aspect, you can see another wall here. Okay, that is your lingual wall or your palatal wall. So now what all walls we have? We have one wall, we have two wall and we have three walls. So we have three walls that are remaining here. We have three walls that are remaining here. So your answer is a three wall defect. Your answer is a three wall defect. Okay, it is a three wall defect, which is a type of intra bony defect which is a type of intra bony defect. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Okay. Let me just mark one wall here, one wall here, and this wall that you're seeing here. Okay. Yes, everybody has got it. Very good. Okay. So we'll just erase this and then we will move on. Okay. So I have just put some more pictures here. <coughs> for you to get a basic idea of what I was talking about. Now see this tooth here. This tooth here, we are again talking about this tooth here. Okay. 
can you see any facial wall here can you see any facial wall on this side any facial wall present here i know the pictures might not be that clear but can you see any facial wall here like the other picture that we talk or here see you can see the facial wall nicely here is there any facial wall here no only wall that you see is the wall that is on to this tooth here and the back wall that you are seeing here so you have two walls here which all walls are present the lingual wall and the distal wall okay the facial wall and the mesial wall are gone so only two walls are remaining two wall defect two wall defect okay <clears throat> now this is another picture taken now look at look at this there is a big defect here there is a big defect here and there is nothing in the center also so the facial wall is gone the lingual wall is gone and the mesial wall is gone the only wall that is present is this one what defect is this the only wall that is present is on that next to the adjacent tooth protecting that tooth so what is that defect what is this defect that we are talking about only one wall is remaining so it is a one wall defect it is a one wall defect okay it is a one wall defect okay and then finally you have a sometimes you will have situation where the defect will start from the distal end and it will go on to the buccal end okay these kind of defect are called as circumferential defects circumferential defects or a trough like defect like a trough it will be it will be like a trough okay this much area it's a trough like defect okay this is separately just identified as a another type of defect just to show you the picture okay so just to give you an idea what a one wall two wall three wall and a circumferential defect looks like okay to show a three wall it is very difficult because you will not understand it until unless you see it clinically until unless you see it clinically sir in the first picture two adjacent teeth involved first picture no this wall is actually here okay i know most of you will have that confusion what we are seeing here is this the whole wall protecting this tooth here only the label for this tooth on the label aspect there is bone loss but on its mesial aspect the mesial aspect of this tooth there is bone present that is why we are calling it as a two wall defect okay see like i said when you open clinically you will be able to understand and uh, correlate much more better okay <coughs> okay so moving on to our last question so this is about the last thing we'll just do is a little bit about furcation okay question number 5 caldisac defect of furcation is graded as caldisac defect of furcation is graded yes it is graded as grade 2 defect okay it is graded as grade 2 defect so before we go into the classification just want to give you some anatomical idea of this area okay this will give one color okay and this we will give another color okay so what is this area this area is the what do you call this area this is the root cone this is called as the root cone what do you call this area where there is no uh, what uh, uh, division there is no furcation is not extending to that area that is known as the root trunk very good that is known as the root trunk and together these two together it is known as the root complex it is together known as the root complex then this area the furcal opening it can be called as the furca you can call it either as furca some call it as fornix some will call it as the dome <clears throat> okay so in different definitions in different classifications you will see all these terms that are being used so this is the basic idea or anatomy that you should know before you go into the classification root trunk that is this much area where there is no bifurcation and from where the bifurcation start it is known as the root cone together they are known as the root complex and this opening or the furcation opening is known as the furca fornix or the dome 
phoca phonics or the dome okay very good okay so now we will see the classification so the classification for again phocation was given by can anyone tell me who gave the classification the most commonly used classification for phocation is given by it is given by very good it is given by glickman no ham et al classification is also there but it is given by glickman the most commonly that we use is glickman classification okay ham et al is also there okay very good somebody has said ham et al okay <coughs> okay uh, please explain uh somebody has okay let me just finish this and then we'll explain uh please explain uh shubham please you'll have to let me know what you are expecting again huh? just message me okay as i soon as i finish this okay so now we are coming to glickman's classification okay so to remember classifications or to remember any definitions what you need to do is that pick up very few points pick up the most important points in that topic or in that definition and keep it in your head that's it you are done and dusted for each one okay so how do we go about it look at grade 1 grade one phocation it's an incipient lesion so anywhere you see uh, uh in the definition incipient lesion you know it is a grade one defect supra bony pocket is present mostly affects your soft tissue early bone loss can occur no radiographic changes there will be no radiographic changes so this is an grade one phocation see this is your root cone this is your root trunk this much and this is where your phoca is starting but it is completely filled with your bone just starting resorption is just starting there okay so that is your grade 1 defect or an incipient lesion that means your probe will not go into it your probe will not go into it which is the probe that you use which is the probe that you use for detecting phocation can anybody tell me yes it is known as the neighbors probe very good it is known as the neighbors probe it is known as neighbors probe okay it is known as neighbors probe okay so that is grade 1 defect grade 2 defect can you see now a little bit of bone is getting resorbed okay little bit of bone is getting resorbed so that is the culti sac can you see now you can see that the bone is getting eaten up and it is moving into a inner 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 it is getting eaten up so this is the horizontal component is starting here okay the horizontal component that means it's getting eaten up but is is the bone detached from the dome no it is still attached to so from the top to the bottom there is bone from here to here there is bone but in a horizontal way it is getting eaten up in a horizontal that is if like this it is getting eaten up bone is getting eaten up in this way okay that is your grade 2 defect so what all are the words that you look for cul de sac lesion definite horizontal component radiograph may or may not show the defect okay then you move to grade 3 defect bone not attached to the dome of the phocation very important point so now what has happened is that earlier the phocation was like this everything was filled till the top but it was getting eaten up from inside so i'll draw and i'll make you understand what i mean by that there was bone getting eaten up like this in a horizontal way it's getting eaten up imagine you're going inside the tooth but the bone from top to bottom from here to here it is attached okay but as you come to grade 2 defect what happens the same defect changes the same defect changes and here what you will have you will have the defect starting from here defect starting so that means there is bone loss occurring in vertical direction that is like this also now bone is getting lost rather than in this way also in horizontal and a vertical component is de uh, developing that is known as your grade 3 defect that is known as your grade 3 defect okay so for sure you will have a radiographic feature for sure you will have a radiographic feature okay and finally you have the grade 4 defect finally you have the grade 4 defect grade 4 defect is what as you see the tooth itself you will be able to see the phocation through and through you will be able to see it through and through that means from the 
uh, label side or from the buccal side when you see you will know that the bone is destroyed and there is recession of the gingiva which makes it visible which makes it clinically visible whereas here can you see this defect is filled with soft tissue this defect is percussion is filled with soft tissue here it is open here the defect is open it is not filled with soft tissue okay so it is a through and through defect okay so these are the four grades of percussion grade 1 defect grade 2 defect grade 3 defect and grade 4 defect okay i hope this is clear this is just a basic idea just to give you a basic idea of the classification when we come in contact classes we will have detailed discussion of each defect okay we will have detailed discussion of each defect okay now somebody had asked me one question so the crest of the defect is same as that of the bone in whole yes 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 is same as that on it is correct it is same as that of the i will draw and show i think i showed you the same thing before also this is the tooth the defect is here the crest is also it will be at the same the defect will be at the same level as that of the crest defect will be at the same level as that of the crest okay <coughs> okay so i hope this is clear and i hope i was able to give you a insight on to how we will go about please tell about horizontal component and forcation okay we are going like a detailed class here huh? okay just let me draw this picture let me take one slide back so it's more clearer for you guys yeah let me draw it here so you will understand okay now imagine this tooth one like this and one i tell you the difference of horizontal and vertical component let me take one color here fill this up completely okay and this one like here okay so now this is the buccal side and on the other side you have the lingual side imagine the buccal and lingual okay now this defect once you when you say when there is horizontal bone loss there is bone loss occurring here like this that means it is getting now if you can see my finger this if you put your probe here it will go like this the bone is eaten up like a like a bowl shaped uh, defect it's like a crater but from the dome to here so if i draw the defect it will the defect will be like this if i'm uh, drawing the cross sectional the defect this is the top of the forcation this is the bone down here this is the defect this is a horizontal defect like this like a c shaped defect and vertical defect if i draw in comparison to this this is the vertical defect this is the vertical defect that means now there is an horizontal component the bone is from the buccal to the lingual side the bone is getting eaten up in this way and you are losing bone from the top also the vertical component has also started this is the vertical component this is the horizontal component am i able to uh, uh, make you understand because it's a three dimensional okay but if you see like this i think you will be able to get an idea this is the furca this is the furca this is this area and this is the base here so this is how it is getting eaten up but it is attached to the everything is attached to the dome so from vertically there is no bone loss but only in a horizontal direction whereas in the next case the bone is getting eaten up horizontally and vertically also so from the top also we are losing bone and from this direction also we are losing bone that is the horizontal component and the vertical component is it clear dr jopen yes okay very good very good okay excellent oh, okay so with that we come somebody has said no shubham okay i just spent another 5 minutes on this see this this thing i'm drawing here imagine it's a cross sectional view okay this is the furca top and this is the base here if the bone loss is occurring like this like this that means from here it's getting eaten up like a bowl shaped it's getting eaten up like a bowl shape 
yes it's a two dimensional picture what we are talking about a three dimensional so this is the horizontal bone loss or if i fill it up like this let me fill it up this is all bone huh? within the furcation from the buccal end to the lingual end now let me erase it for you this is how the uh, furcation loss is occurring okay it is still attached to the dome but it is getting eaten up it is getting eaten up this is the horizontal component vertical component is very simple this whole area is getting eaten up and there is little bit of bone present in the as you come towards a lower area there will be bone here there will be bone here. but there is bone loss from the top end and from the buccal end also from the buccal side and from the uh, top also okay uh, when we come for contact classes i will show you in a tooth structure with the neighbor's probe i will pass it and show you so that you will clearly understand what do i mean by a horizontal component and a vertical component okay i think yes uh this is all the best pictures that i can put of a vertical one as compared to a, a horizontal one okay so that's it we are done with the questions for today we are done with the questions for today i hope this is, was a useful session for all of you okay just to get a basic idea of how we will go about the classes okay so to uh tomorrow again 